Right, so we've got our application set up. Let's create our first component here. So I'm gonna create a folder. Let's call it components. And I'm gonna create a countdown component. So that's gonna be countdown.js. So let's create a first component. So in this case, let's begin with a functional component. So if you don't know the difference between functional and class-based components, Basically, the simplest component in React is just simply a function. So we could create, let's say, a function here. So let's do const countdown. I'm going to use an arrow function that's going to accept props. And it's basically going to return a JSX element, a React element. So in this case, let's just return a div. Let's have a title. New year is coming up soon. Okay, gonna close that off, save that. Right, and so once you have that set up, you would also need to do export, default, countdown, because we wanna make sure that this function gets exported so we can import it in app.js. We're gonna do that next. So let's do import countdown from, it's gonna be, in fact, what I'm gonna do is I want to, I'm gonna comment this out, I want to move app.js to components because app.js is also a component in itself. So that's going to break things up because I would need to adjust the import in index.js. So I'm going to do components. Okay, that's going to be saved. And let's see how we're doing. Yep, this still works. Okay, back here, app.js. Okay, so I want to import the countdown. Let's see, so it's basically just going to be count down our new component here. And then once I have the title, let's do count down. But I'm pretty sure that this is not going to work. Let's see. Yep, you get an error. And the error basically tells you that you can't have two elements like this. So you need to have a, a wrapping element around them. So let's have a div. And we get an error because we did not import React in Countdown. So that's the other thing. So the syntax here, as you've already seen, this syntax is what's known as JSX. So JSX, very briefly, is just simply an extension to JavaScript. And it basically allows you to have XML-like syntax in JavaScript. So this sort of like looks like HTML, but as we're going to go along, I'm going to explain to you that basically this is not exactly HTML. And in fact, the stuff right there, the, the div block with the h1 tag, that basically gets converted to React create element call. So essentially behind the scenes, this is just plain JavaScript. In fact, I'm gonna show it to you right now. So let's go to react.js.org. And if you look through some of the examples here, you're gonna see a link to Babel REPL. REPL just stands for um, Redeval Print Loop, I think. All right, so let's look at the simple example right here. So we've got an element here. It's basically a JSX or a React element. It basically describes what needs to be rendered to the DOM. So in this example, we want to render a simple heading to the DOM. That's going to be our element. And we assign that to the element variable. And next, we have a container. So this is just simply a, a DOM element with the idea of root. In fact, I'm going to remove the spacing so that it makes more sense. Like so, we get the element. We store it in the container variable, and then we just call React DOM um, render to render that element that we just created, the heading, right? To render it to the container uh, root element. So this is where the element block is going to be mounted to. And as you can see here on the right, what this gets converted to, so the block of JSX code that we wrote, it gets converted to a call to React create element. And this is what the code is basically going to look like once we compile JSX with Babel. Babel is just basically going to replace all of the instances of this code, right? That looks like HTML or XML, but really isn't. And it's going to convert it to React Create Element. So the first argument we pass is going to be a string. So that's the h1 tag. The second one is going to be the object that's going to contain all of the properties um, on, that, on that element. And then lastly, we pass the text node. So Let's say we wanted to add a class here. And the other thing to keep in mind is that JSX is the extension of JavaScript and not HTML. So in this case, I can't use the class, right? 
because the class is a reserved keyword in JavaScript. We use classes to create classes, like let's say class human, right? That's just going to be a class, and that's going to be converted to a function in the end once, once it's compiled with Babel, right? So classes are a reserved keyword, so instead we use what's known as class name. You might have seen it before if you've been working with um, just plain DOM elements, right? If you have, let's say, document get element by ID, if you wanted to modify the class name on that element, you would just simply do, I'll just copy that, you would just do class name equals, and then you assign it to whatever you want, right? So we use class name instead of class in JavaScript. So we do, let's say, class name heading. And as you can see, we get the class name on the right. So this is going to be the object containing all the properties of that element. You might also have, let's say, ID equals um, heading one or something. And that property is also going to be part of that same object. Now let's say that inside of the h1 tag, you also wanted to have some children. So let's say you wanted to have a span, and that's going to be just hello or something. Okay, we're going to close that off. And as you can see right there, instead of just a simple text node, we get another React Create element call. So the purpose here is just to show you that all of the uh, the JSX syntax that you see right there, it basically gets compiled to React Create element behind the scenes. So back to the editor. And like I said, we forgot to import React from React, okay? So that's the only thing, and I think it should work from that on. Let's go back, yep, that seems to be working fine. All right, so the other thing here is because we're gonna have a countdown timer, right? We're basically gonna have a few sections or boxes where we're gonna have like days, hours, minutes, and seconds. We're gonna need some styling here, and I don't wanna make this course about CSS, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna import a library. So one of the cool CSS libraries that I've been working on in the past is Bulma. So Bulma is just a cool CSS framework that works kind of the same as Pushup, but it basically has all the different elements that you can think of, you know, buttons, icons, images. There's also components like modals, dropdowns, cards, and of course the regular layouts. And the cool thing is that the library is also based on the Flexbox model in CSS, so it's pretty versatile. If you were to look at the columns section, it's pretty easy to use as you're going to see if you had a bunch of columns. So I'm going to use that library. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the server here. So I'll do npm i-s bulma. So this is basically the same as doing npm install dash dash save bulma, right? It's just a shortcut for that. So let's do that, bulma. And that's basically going to install the library for us. And in the meantime, I'm going to go back to the website. Let's open it up. And I'm going to go to the documents. I want to go to layouts and the hero. So I want to use the hero banner for the countdown timer. So let's see, yeah, that finished up. I'm just going to do npm start. All right, so back in the editor, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to node modules. I'm going to find the Bulma library that we got installed here. So I'm going to do, let's go to index. Let's do import Bulma. CSS, Bulma.css. So that should basically apply all the styling. And as you can see right there, the styling got applied and the design got changed already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to app.js. So we got our countdown here. Let's go to that countdown. In fact, what I'm going to do is let's go, let's scroll down here. So I'm going to find a full height hero. Let's see. So yeah, I think we're going to use this one. So this is basically going to be a section. Let's go in here, count down. So I'm going to replace the div with this snippet of code. Let's adjust the div. Let's indent it a little bit. And the next thing I'm going to do is, of course, we've got classes here. So that's not going to work. In fact, if you try to save it, if you go back, you're going to see that, yep, that breaks. Invalid property class. So we've got to replace that. So I'm going to do is replace the class with a class name place all and this should work okay so that looks fine and then back in app.js I think I'm going to remove the title we don't need it so we're just going to have the countdown and this is what the countdown is going to look like 